Hello, be friends, lovers of freedom across the world. I welcome you to this amazing program. Wherever you are joining me from, I appreciate you and I thank you for being part of this program. Please like and share the program on your platform. Share to family and friends. Share to everyone that is close to you so that they can be part of this very platform and be able to send information across. Fellow beer friends and people of the world, viewers across the world, in this very platform, we do not come here to instigate violence. We do not come here to preach hate. We don't come here for saga or to attack any individual. What we do in this platform is to send information across to the world on the true situation of things in Biafra land and in the contraption called Nigeria. There are so many things that are not being taken note of. There are so many things that are happening that are being told in a different form. In this platform, we bring those information to your doorstep and tell you exactly how things are. There are certain videos that you might not be able to come across on, on the media. Some videos that are hidden from the eyes of the people, we bring them out and share it through the social media so that the world will be aware of what is going on in the contraption called Nigeria. I welcome every one of you and I'm going to share a very important information as we speak. I want you to watch this video from the beginning to end. You will understand what we are talking about. So many things that you can't see online. You are going to see it here. So, listen to this very video from the beginning to end. I bet you, you're going to enjoy it. Let us watch it together and see what the video has to say. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister Sani Aparawa. Greetings, everyone. His Excellency, Simon Eber, Dr. Jonathan Levy, Brigade Cabinet members, de facto government administrators, county and regional directors, stakeholders, media personnel present, dear friends and friends of dear friends. Welcome to the first ever press conference by the Biafra government in relation to the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. My name is Dr. Ngozi Robreza, the Chief of Staff to the Biafra Prime Minister. Welcome everyone. The 2023 counter reports on human rights practices in Nigeria by the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor inducted Nigerian government in so many ways of human rights abuse, violations, incarcerations and killings. Closely related to the search for peace and reduction of killings in Africa is the International Crisis Group Report on African Union. Among the eight major priorities in 2024 by African Union is the Biafran and Bazonia Alliance, signed in Finland in 2023 during the Biafra Referendum Conference under the leadership of His Excellency Simon Eber. This conference heralded the Biafra Charter and other important documents that have paved way for Biafra declaration later this year. Today, Biafrans through their prime minister and our council has continued to bring to world attention the violations, oppression, suppression, and inhuman treatment that Biafrans go through under the Nigerian government from 1967 to 1970, when Biafra was a full-fledged country to date. The young country Biafra was thwarted by the Nigerian government with over 3 million Biafrans killed and many children starved to death by the Nigerian government. The policy that placed embargo on food, especially proteins, into Biafra land. Same problems that caused the civil war of 1967 to 1970 still exist today in a more deadly format with the reintegration of terrorists into the Nigerian state, Islamization of Nigeria, and use of two laws in one country, creating a very dangerous diversity. A major violation in several human rights report is the unlawful kidnap, torture, rendition, and continued incarceration of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazi Namdekanu, by the Nigerian government. Several court rulings in Nigeria, including a United Nations committee set up to look into Namdekanu's case, 
have acquitted, discharged him, and sought reimbursement to him from the Nigerian government. But the government have refused to release Namdekano or obey any of these court orders, both local and international. A country that has no respect for the rule of law is gone. Nigerian government believed that if it holds Namdekano long enough, Biafra agitation and freedom will be abandoned and not realized. Knowing that their mission has failed in that aspect, they turned their attention to the only true disciple son of Mazin Namdekano, His Excellency Simon Eber, the Prime Minister of Biafra government in exile. Under Simon Eber's leadership of millions of Biafrans and in a recent ex Twitter poll conducted, 98% of Biafrans voted to exit Nigeria. This fact is undisputable. It is the wish of the people and it should be respected for peace, equity, justice, and in line with the laws governing self-determination. Biafrans made the criteria for those laws of which Nigeria was a member state and signed those treaties. The issue of the Lekki massacre, a mass burial of innocent victims who participated in the march was confirmed by the Human Rights Report of 2023. Nigeria government denied killing and burying those innocent children. The truth will always stand the test of time. Other violations by the Nigerian government include the incarceration, torture of Biafrans in different cells across Nigeria, whose only crime was to seek for their own country and to exit a country where known terrorists are reintegrated into the security apparatus including military and police. The recent killings in Enugu by Fulani terrorists supported and shielded by the Nigerian military and government is documented. Hundreds of killings in different parts of Nigeria, including the Ehamufu killings, the Obibo killings, the Mbo killings, the Aba killing, recently the Okuama Niger Delta killings, the Olu killings, Boronus, Jos, Zafara, Kaduna, Benue, Abuja, including the federal capital territory of Nigerian killings. Persistent and continuous kidnappings of indigenous citizens, school children, undergraduates, women and children with no help from the government, headed by President Tinubu or the army chief under Christopher Musa or the senators headed by Godswill Ababio. Little help comment on national TVs, no safeguard of lives and properties by the Nigerian government. Biafra exit is a life and death matter. These and many more are the reasons why Biafra seek to exit Nigeria. Biafrans have maintained the Monday seat at home consistently for over two years, courtesy of Biafrans and the Prime Minister, His Excellency Simon Emma. This act in itself is a form of referendum and coupled with our established government in exile and de facto homeland administrators, our defined geographical area with its people, culture and origin well defined, the 40 United States of Biafra, each with its governors whom we call the administrators, deputies and secretaries. Citizens in these 40 states are loyal to these administrators and to the Biafra government in exile. I have been massively participating in the referendum voting, which is in its second stage. Over 20 million Biafrans that rejected the past election in Nigeria, which was documented on Nigeria INEC website, many of them have voted for the Biafra referendum and more are still voting daily as we speak. Biafrans are at the point where we are facing extinction and begging to leave from the Nigerian government and sponsored Fulani terrorists who kill, maim, and occupy indigenous Nigerians' home without any consequences from the Tinubu government. During the recent killings in Plateau State, one of the city legislators noted that the practice of these terrorists is to attack communities who, out of fear, run away from their homes then only for the same home to be occupied by foreigners in a few months time. This is happening across the whole country. 
the act of depopulate and occupy is what the Nigerian government and their terrorist loyalists use to eliminate thousands of indigenous Nigerians and Biafrans every year. How could a government that reintegrates non-terrorists as an approved policy be asking world leaders to help fight terrorists? This game is ended. These killings, burning of homes and businesses targeted at Biafrans by the Nigerian government using both the military, police and reintegrated terrorists can no longer be tolerated. The continuous attack of Biafra businesses in different parts of the country, such as in Lagos, Kaduna, Abuja, Kano, and the economic sabotage of Biafrans on a daily basis by the Nigerian Tinubu government can no longer be tolerated or swept under the carpet. Remember the 20 pounds given to all Biafrans at the end of the civil war, regardless of how much any Biafran had in the bank. Such wickedness against Biafran persists to date, and we cannot accept it anymore. Biafrans have risen up to defend themselves from these constant killings, oppression, suppression, and economic destruction. For many years, we've marched on the streets, we've carried placards to express our wish, we've consulted publicly and privately with stakeholders, we've reached out to foreign bodies such as the United Nations for help. In all these what do we get? More reprisals, more killings of unarmed citizens, marginalization, hatred, subjugation, intimidation, and above all, continued violation of our rights, land, and property by the Nigerian government, their allies, and their supporters. This is against all international laws and treaties they sign with other countries. Nigerian government believes in the use of the barrel of the gun to silence those who do not wish to be part of their terrorist state and agenda. Even innocent women and children who were not involved or against what they do uh, end up being murdered. So this shows that whether you defend yourself or not, Nigerian government will kill you using the reintegrated terrorists whose agenda is to depopulate and conquer. The government agenda approved and signed by Nigerian government and legislators and reintegrate these terrorists in different formats, including the one called Ruga, of which they used to spread across the whole Nigeria. The Fulani tactics of divide and conquer is a strong tool which they've employed over the years in many African regions, including Biafra land. They financially and politically corrupt the governors, legislators, local leaders, townships, and citizens to continue their heinous crime. These inner part in the divide and conquer game are the insiders in the United States of Biafra who are being used by the Nigerian government, killer governors in the Southeast and South South, as well as those who are benefiting financially from the Nigerian government to distract, manipulate, and destroy the Biafra struggle. But have no doubt, the crop of Biafrans in the forefront of this struggle today has systematically, through due diligence, investigation and information identified most of these saboteurs and their tactics and we continuously be treated as enemy of the people finally the intervention and actions of the african human rights commission and other world bodies are needed urgently as we move towards the declaration of the independent state of biafra on december 2nd 2024 in finland on this note I thank our leader, Onyendu Nam Dekanu, for your steadfastness, resilience, and your stand for peace, equity, and justice. Keep holding on. At this point, please permit me to call on our one and only in the 30th epitome of resilience, a man whom our leader, Onyendu, commanded, commanded their friends to go and follow and do what he says, because he is bringing a new dimension to this liberation process. The man that opened the eyes of Biafras and the world to the iniquity, sufferings, killings, danger, and systematic elimination process of indigenous by the Nigerian government and state. The man whom the Nigerian president, army, police, government, senators, house of friend, and their cabals could not sleep when they remember him. The one whose name is like a thunderbolt to the ears of the oppressors and killers. The man whose enemies post on Twitter faceless, without any face. 
the man who has consistently exposed the ills and wickedness and killings of the Nigerian government to the international state. And for the first time, the world became aware of the ills being perpetrated by the Nigerian government and their cronies on a whole new level. This guy has shaken Nigeria to its roots and nothing, absolutely nothing will stop him because he has the mandate of different people with him. We fully support his actions towards our liberation from a terrorist state. He has threaded where many failed, and his wisdom and commitment to Biafra restoration sets him on the highest pedestal. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome the Ambassador of Peace, Biafra Prime Minister, His Excellency, Agunia Chamber, Obatobie Mazi Simon Ember. Thank you so much. In this particular age, in this global village, to do things just like other people have done in the past, they will make reference to Mandela. They tell you Gandhi. They tell you this one. Who is Gandhi? He's not a human being. I want to be the Gandhi of Biafra. I want to be the Mandela of Biafra. I want to design a plan, a way for, Niger for Biafra to exit Nigeria. So I am going to be the, when they, after this Biafra struggle this year, Proceeding and then going forward, they are going to use Samonekpa of Biafra to give example. That is what I'm looking for. Not uh, what Mandela did or what Gandhi did. Gandhi, Gandhi did it in the centuries many years ago. Mandela did it in 1990, whatever, many years ago. We are not going to do the same thing. We are completely different people with different problems. Okay? We have now understand our own problem. We, are desi we have designed the solution that will work for us. So the solution that work for other people will not will never work for us. And when you hear them tell you, Mandela did not run away from South Africa, but he was in prison. You think that if Mandela knew that he was going to be uh, kidnapped and arrested and put in prison for 27 years, he will be there and waiting for them to take him to 47. He's not going to be waiting. He will run away. Okay? The same thing happened. The Uguru of, Ten of Kenya, he was seeking asylum in Enugu. He was in Enugu, Enugu, this Enugu, this uh, Kenya people, he, the leader, uh, uh, um, uh, Kenyatta, was in Enugu. Uh, in fact, Enugu, uh, uh, the place was named after him, Kenyatta Street, if some of you may know. Thank you so much for watching the program. I appreciate you for your patience to watch from beginning to end. I hope you have learned a lot from this very program that I just played this video please like and share the video share to all platform after sharing the video now you can go to the comment section and put down your comments whatever suggestions contributions you have to make what do you think about the video i just played go to the comment section and put your comment i will go to the comment section and i bet you i am learning a lot from there and you can equally learn from there let us share our experience on that comment section thank you so much and stay blessed don't forget to share and we continue to bless you as you share. We are from government. Peace, progress, unity, and everything. We move. Air on. <laughs>